Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Whenever you are listening to the podcast, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me as always. I'm excited to dive into more of these questions. Again, I can't thank you enough for sending in these questions. They're well thought out. They are helpful for everyone involved, everyone that's listening. There's something we can all learn from them, so I love this. This is like a this is where we get into this community energy of sharing knowledge and information so this is fantastic okay diving straight in the first question for today is um if we come back time and again how will we recognize certain people on the other side who are special to us like brothers or who are soulmates so because of how this question is asked i'm not quite sure if it means like how will we recognize people when we're on this side or how will we recognize people when we're on the other side so what i want i'm going to answer both of those so first of all there is what's considered like a soul resonance a known frequency and when we've had lifetimes with people before soulmates that kind of thing there is a known frequency about that person so that when you meet them say it's in this lifetime when you meet them there is a familiarity to that person something that sticks in your mind and you feel it in your energy that you're like i know this person or why do i feel so comfortable like what is it there's a something more because we can meet some we can meet people sometimes and you know really get along with them and it's great but it's still new but then there's people that we meet them and we're like this goes way back and it's because it's a known frequency essentially your body and your spirit is recognizing that frequency because it has been with that frequency before it's known right and the same can be said for people in your life like those longtime friends that whenever they're around they just feel comfortable because they are a known frequency so that same thing then also applies on the other side but i i want to expand on this part a little bit more so People have asked me, when you cross over, do spirits look like they did in person? How do you know who they are? Like, what do they look like? And I can only speak from my personal experience in my near-death experience, is when I had those beautiful reunions with a whole bunch of different souls in my life, this, this is where it gets tricky because it's not a 3D perspective. It is a much higher perspective because I could see them both as an energy, like a sphere of an energy. I could see them as a color. I recognize them by the color. I also recognize them as who they were because I could see who they were. And at the same time, I couldn't see who they were because they were in spirit. But all of that was happening at the same time. And in that place on the other side, it made sense and it was normal. So I recognize them through all the different ways, like visually, through a color frequency, through the feeling of them, um, and it all made sense. And so what I'm trying to get at with this is when we cross over, we will definitely, definitely recognize the souls that have been integral and very important in our lives. We won't miss it because first of all, they're most likely gonna be there greeting you, saying hi, welcoming you back, all of that kind of stuff. And then secondly, the the frequency, that soul resonance that we feel on this side, we experience in totality on the other side. So all to say is trust that resonant feeling. When you have that feeling that you know this person or they're familiar or you've come across them before, that kind of thing, trust in that because you're feeling it for a reason, okay? All right, so next piece. we go next question is um okay the idea that there is no time and past present and future and how it already exists runs counter to the idea of free will and choice the revelation i had is that every action by anyone or anything in our world creates a collective timeline past present and future this timeline is constantly ebbing and flowing small choices we make may have no effect on major events, but it does change the timeline in subtle ways. So if you could look into the future, you would see that moments, that moments in time, which will change the next, okay, so sorry. So you will see that if you look into the future, each time essentially that you look into the future, the moment can change. 
And so they're like, is that correct? Is that how it goes? And so, yes, the timeline that we like to see from our perspective in 3D is a linear one, a one that moves in a single line progression. But time in the higher realms does not move linearly. And that's why we say that past, present, and future are happening all at the same time because it's not moving linearly. It's moving in every direction, which again is hard for us to understand from this 3D perspective that is based on the known 3D physics of our planet, right? That's how we're raised. So it is very true that every time, if you were to continually look at the future, say every hour, it would definitely have the potential to change because it is accurate that free will can change the future. However, there are also highest probabilities and those highest probabilities are based on uh, what's been decided in history, like what, what choices have led to a particular moment can dictate the highest probable outcome. And then the, the destiny that is created within our life blueprint can also create a highest probability. However, free will can always come in and change that. So if we're looking on an individual level, spirit, when they give you predictions and so on, premonitions, they're giving you the highest probable outcome based on the snapshot at the time it's taken. And so that's what I always say when I'm talking to people, either in a mediumship reading or tuning in somehow, I say, I'm giving you the highest probable snapshot based on right now, which can change. And oftentimes my guides will give me like a, per a percentage at that time, so they might say, you know, the snapshot right now of A, B, C, and D is a 90% probability. Or sometimes they'll say it's only about a 60% probability. And so that's how we see it on a uh, personal align, timeline. A collective timeline, though, can have probabilities as well, but each individual choice, like this person was saying, can have an effect on the collective timeline also and can also alter even bigger events that we think maybe we can't. And an example of that is, say um, we are heading into a highest probable timeline of World War III, okay? Say that's kind of written in the collective destiny. But enough people make individual free will choices to raise their consciousness kind of by a certain time, that can then change the trajectory of the highest probable outcome being World War III. So that's why Spirit's always saying what we do in our own individual lives, even though we're making that choice based on our individual timeline, it can have a huge effect on the collective timeline. So yes, there is free will and any kind of future thing is based on highest probabilities. Sometimes those probabilities can be 99.9% .9 and sometimes they can be even down to 20%. So it does depend on the time in which you looked into the future. So. Fantastic question, love it, love it. Okay, next one is why do spirit guides use numbers? Why does spirit like to speak in numbers, number patterns, repeated numbers? First of all, because on our planet, we have given numbers meaning, even way, way back in time, right? Like way in our history, we have decided that numbers can have a numerical value, but then numbers can also have a meaning and a representation of a communication. And because of that, that's another tool that spirit can use to bring stuff through. Now, because we have clocks and watches and phones and all kinds of ways that time can be shown to us, it's a very easy tool for spirit to use to convey a message. And because we have known general collective meanings behind the numbers, it's again, very easy for them to draw our attention to our watch, to our phone at a certain time to bring through a message. So it's just, it's easy, it's available, and uh, Spirit loves being able to communicate that way because it, again, it's easy and it's available. So beautiful question. If you're wanting to know more about the number patterns, what they mean, uh, I did do a podcast on Spirit Numbers, so you can look that one up as well. There's a lot of information online, and what I want to say is when you read the meanings of certain numbers, take what resonates for you. Like somebody might say a one means this or one means that, it's for you to take the one that means something to you and when you do, 
Spirit will then bring through the numbers based on the meanings that you have. So what I mean by that is someone could look at um, a number three. Two people could be driving and they say 333 on a sign, say. And one person could see that number three and be like, oh my gosh, that means my spirit guides and ascended masters are near me, supporting me. I'm so grateful. Somebody else could look at that and be like, uh, this means I need to deepen my practice and, and connect more into the ascended masters. And somebody else could look at it and be like, this means I'm on my spiritual path, right? It's about what it means for you and your guides will figure that out and then give you the appropriate messages. So great question. Okay, next question. I love this. It says, I'd like you to ask why. Just the word why and see what they give you. So I'm going to just do that right now. I'm just going to tune in quick. This made me laugh. I love it. So I'm just going to ask Spirit why and see what they say. So just hold on one moment. Okay, this is beautiful. First thing they said right off the bat when I said, all right, Spirit why and they said because you matter this is why all of this is because you matter and i'm not talking about me spirit's not answering me specifically spirit is answering all of us because we matter you listening to this right now you watching this right now you matter and you being here at this time right now on the planet making these changes growing in your consciousness in a deeply transformative way matters and makes a huge difference and has been making a huge difference and think about they're showing me that scale of growth from 2020 to where we are now think of how much individual growth you have had and then multiply your individual growth by at least a quarter of the population of the planet at least a quarter that is big collective energy so many people have been growing, whether they're fully conscious of it or not. They have, been, they have been having to ask themselves certain questions about what resonates with them, what life means to them, what is important for them, where do what they want to shift their perspective, what old narratives are they letting go of. All of those things matter. So I love this. What a beautiful question. Why? Because you matter. So great. Okay. Next question is, um, is there a hell? This is a great question. One that many people ask and I completely understand why. Now, again, I wanna say this is something that everybody will have their own perspective on and so I really wanna honor that regardless of religion, just belief system, perhaps experience. I can only share from my perspective and what I've gained. So this may resonate for you and it may not and that's okay. From my understanding, from talking to thousands of spirits who've crossed over, is that hell is a depiction of something you choose when you cross over. Now, there's much more detail to that. So let's start from the beginning. When you cross over, you have a life review. And in that life review, uh, we all have it. In that life review, you get the opportunity to See how you treated people from their perspective, like watching it through their eyes, feeling it through their body. And you get to feel that for the ways in which you treated people well and the ways in which you treated people very poorly. And after that, you get to decide what is best for your soul and spirit in its next steps to either make sense of how you were in your life, to further your journey in your life, to make up for things maybe you feel you want to karmically balance, all of that. And some people can choose to hold themselves in a very low frequency energy on the other side that is either very empty or very alone. And some people will choose to come back into another lifetime to make amends for the things they did. And so for some people, their perspective of hell may be their experience in a lifetime, but maybe this very hellish experience where say they were, they suffered greatly from either illness or abuse may have been connected to a past life they had in which they inflicted that. Other souls may take their hellish experience, come back in a lifetime and do something extremely positive change making that alters the course of humanity 
because of their experience, either having a hellish life or being one that created that for others, somebody who was a bad person. Again, it's all dependent on the soul. Now, sometimes some souls cross over and they say, and I've heard this in near-death experience stories too, where some people say they crossed over and all they saw was darkness. There was nothing there. Or all they heard was like scary, maybe not scary noises, but like it was dark and it was cold and all of this. I want to say that some people may perceive that as hell and perhaps their soul either desired that experience or what I've seen many times is when people cross over and they feel they're in that area. There, I've seen lots of souls in that area, so to speak. Some may call it purgatory. I call it simply them having their eyes down. And what happens is sometimes when people crap pass sorry, so fast or very traumatically, they pop onto the other side and they're in such a panic about what happened that they're looking down. And they're not seeing that around them is spirit, is their guides, their angels, is the light helping them to cross over. They're just kind of like in a narrow vision field of panic and fear. And that fear elicits a feeling of um, darkness, of hellish energy. So my opinion, is there a hell? I don't think so in the, in the way that it's traditionally depicted. I think we choose where we go on the other side. That being said though, do I think there are low frequency beings and some pretty bad ones that would typically live in what we consider hell as a general storyline? Yes, I do. There are low frequency energies. There are darker entities. And so where do they reside? They reside in a lower frequency. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a question that I could give a simple answer, which I did, of I don't believe there's a traditional hell. However, there are a lot of kind of tangents we can take within that exploration based on frequency. So I hope that helps explain it. What I do want to leave you with, with that question specifically, is for those of you that are growing in your consciousness, that are kind people, even if you've had a rough life leading up to who you are today, or even if today is the day that you're deciding, I want to be different. I want to be better. I want to be kind. I want to be whatever it is, no matter what you've done. The moment that you decide you want different and you want better, your frequency is rising. We do not have to be perfect. And the spirit world does not expect us to be perfect at all. We have all done things in our lives where we have screwed up. Some of us have screwed up royally. But spirit loves when we're willing to look at what we've done and change our behavior and learn from it and grow from it and help others from it. And so again, if someone's had a really, really hellish life and they cross over, but they realize the magnitude of it and they decide they want to do something about it, either in another life, maybe in another planet, however it might be, there is so much support for it. So this is not to make anybody feel anything of fear, worry, shame, or anything. The fact that you are open-minded and growing is all that matters and you will not go to hell. You will be received and loved by spirit for who you are and the growth you're willing to make. So I really want to just emphasize that. Okay, next question. Um, this person said that they had been told many times that an ex-partner had been with them in many past lives. And they wanted to know, how can I get rid of this ex-partner from ever coming back in my life? And that's a great question. This, what's really neat about this is we are in a really neat phase in our collective consciousness as humanity where we have greater embodied consciousness to change soul contracts. So what I mean by that is many people have been kind of running this karmic loop through many lifetimes with different people. And yes, we often have soul families that we connect with and we come back in with, but sometimes we also get into these karmic loops where there needs to be something that changes or finishes that cycle of karma. And because on earth now we are becoming so much more awakened and conscious and we're healing, we're going into transformation, but like with awareness, we're coming into these layers of understanding we've had past lives with people. 
And we're understanding that we don't want that anymore. We're not feeling helpless to it, but we're saying, hey, I actually don't want that anymore. And I know that I'm gonna have future lives and I do not want this person in that life anymore. And so this is a beautiful thing and I love that this question came up because yes, you do have the power to do that. A couple things to consider is, first of all, are there any um, aspects of healing for you to do in relation to this person? Either it's with your bond specifically, it's either with, say, any traumas, hurts, emotional aspects brought on by the partnership. For you to go in and heal everything that you feel you can within that helps you remove the cords that bind the two of your uh, incarnations or your souls together. So the more healing you do, the more you remove the cords. That's the first part. Once you've done a lot of your healing, you then can basically, and it depends on how it feels right for you, but a simple example is when you feel you are done with a relationship, and you can do this at any point in the relationship, usually there's a little bit of healing that has to happen. But when you're done with it, you can state your desire to cut the bond. And the more that you put your energy into it, the greater impact it has. So what I mean by that is you could simply say, uh, say this person's name is Joe, and this is no offense to anyone named Joe, okay? It's just the first name that popped out. Say you're like, my relationship with Joe is over. I am done with this relationship. I do not wish to have it repeated in this lifetime or any lifetimes beyond. I cut this bond and this tie that from this moment forward, there's nothing connecting the two of us and I relinquish any link between us both. So you can see how my voice changed a little bit into very like strict, specific, stern, stating my energy in and stating my thoughts in that energy. So that's a really important part, stating that. You could yell it, you could scream it, you could set up a very um, elaborate ritual and maybe you're standing in a circle and you've got stones and crystals and candles, you could do that too. You could also light two candles with strings that are kind of bound in between them and then light a third candle that then burns the string bonds between the two allowing each of those candles to now burn individually without being connected, right? There's different ways you can do that. And it's about looking up and aligning with what sort of ceremony, ritual, uh, energetic expression makes you feel it the most. You can also have a conversation with this person's higher self. And I've talked about this before, but you could set up two chairs. You sit in one, you put another one facing you. You invite that person, let's say it's Joe, Invite Joe's higher self to sit with you and you have a very stern conversation with Joe. You could even pretend to give him a contract that he then signs agreeing to uh, creating a dissolution of this soul contract. So several ways to do it, but the biggest thing to know is yes, you absolutely have the power to cut the tie. You do. Sometimes there are deeper karmic links that may show up for you as you move along, but you definitely can. Um, a, couple, a couple other things you could do is connect with um, an Akashic Record reader to go back into the Akashic Records and see where was this bond created in the first place. Uh, you may be able to find that in a mediumship reading, but Akashic Records would definitely have it. And you can find where that bond was and you can go back because again, time, um, future, past or present is all one and the same and you can you can um, disconnect that bond there. And then another thing you can do too is you can also have um, Kevin Semenyuk. He is really good at helping dissolve cords between energies, people, all of that. And he could help navigate the energetic end of clearing cords. So you could check him out as well at avalonspirit.com. Fabulous question. Okay, two more questions, two more questions. Okay, first one is, um, are there more ways to access the blueprint in one's life and really change it? So I talked a lot about seeing my blueprint when I had my near-death experience, and it was through my blueprint that I got to do my life review. So one thing that I'd asked my guides upon coming back to Earth was, do we all have to have an NDE to change our blueprint? And they said, absolutely not. They said, 
the blueprint is essentially where our soul creates these. I saw them when I was on the other side as like fuses and I put in different kind of fuses that had distinct soul desired lessons. And so if you know my story, one of those lessons was through illness, I would understand surrender and asking for help and all this kind of stuff. When I was done that lesson, I was able to take that fuse out and put in a different one. And so what Spirit said is that those fuses, those juncture points, are desired soul lessons. Those are usually those repeating patterns in your life. Not always, but often can be. Once that lesson is learned, it no longer has a purpose in your blueprint. So what you can do from this angle without having to have an NDE is look at, are there any repeated soul lessons happening in your life? Things that keep coming around again and again and again and again. If so, that means there's something that's still left to be learned in that experience. So you can dive into exploring what that is. Other things you can do is look at your life and see where things desire an adjustment or is there somewhere where you're not following your heart's passion or calling from your soul in your heart space to do or experience a thing? Because the more you follow your heart's passion, the more you get to align with your blueprint. The more you align with your blueprint, the more you get to kind of move, move with more grace through your lessons. So it's all connected in. So you could also connect in with your spirit guides through meditation, uh, even maybe through automatic writing or inspired writing and ask your guides to share some insights about your life path and about your blueprint and bring up questions you have. Like I notice this, um, say somebody has a pattern with their weight. I notice that my body tends to carry extra fuel energy on it when I'm stressed. What am I missing here? Right? And maybe your guides can come in and give some, some example or information or answers on that. So meditation is a great way to access it looking at what you notice in your 3D life of repeated patterns, soul desires, are you in alignment, do you feel in flow? And that feeling of alignment will always bring you back to your blueprint. So if you feel way out, way, way out of alignment, you're probably slightly off your blueprint. Okay, now Spirit's talking because anytime I start fumbling my words a lot, it's because they're getting really close. Just hold on one second. Okay, so they're saying in relation to this question, many of you are really being pulled into aligning with your blueprint and they're showing it to me like when you put a transparency down on top of another image and it adds another layer, many of us are kind of being pulled to the original image by the transparency right now. And so it's highlighting for many people the things that are out of alignment. So if you really pay attention, they're like, really pay attention to what doesn't feel in alignment because it's showing you pieces of your blueprint. Beautiful, I love that. Okay, now last question for today. And again, there's gonna be another podcast with these answers. All right, this last one is, I wonder if how can I ask more dynamically to get answers, but also more visuals? I would really like to take my abilities to the next level. And I'm wondering how I can do that. So beautiful question. Um, there are many ways you can do this. So first of all, if you're really wanting to work on visuals, doing third eye meditations, like where you really open your brow chakra, your third eye, um, placing a stone on your third eye in a meditation while you're laying down can really help to bring that focus there. Um, there are many books on how to increase your visualization, different techniques. I also have a course, the Lightworker Mentorship Level 1, um, helps you tap into the Claire's, different Claire's, same with Level 2, so that's an option as well. Um, also, notice what your dream state is like. If you're someone who vividly dreams, then that means you have a very active and open third eye. If you don't vividly dream, then you most likely have a bit more of a closed off third eye and it'll take you more structured work to get into that um, but meditations with sound are a really good way to start to open it and I say meditation because it gives you time to just sit and kind of tune out the outside world it doesn't mean you have to get to a point where you're not thinking we're always thinking but 
it's a matter of starting to go inward into your being. And the more you go inward, the more the universe actually opens up and quite often it'll open up with more and more visuals. So something to be said for that. So I hope that helps answer that question. All right. That's everything for today, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me as always on the podcast. I appreciate you all. My guides, they appreciate you all as well. They're right here. They're excited with the growth and the change and and the desire to learn. That's what they're most inspired by. They're, they're like, we love your desire to learn. So to each and every one of you listening, my guides say thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for your desire to learn. So I'll leave that with all of you. Have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you all next week.